Committee stage next sitting day. Call now on Members' Order of the Day number one. Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill, second reading. Paul Goldsmith. Mr Speaker, uh, I move that the Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill be now read a second time. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, now, uh, the, the, bill, the purpose of this bill is to clarify the legal position on the time at which a contract is formed if the acceptance of the offer is sent by electronic communications. And indeed, uh, a very important piece of legislation it is too. So, uh, if, I, if I may just begin, Mr Speaker, with uh, just a, a, a quick uh, overview of the importance of contracts. Uh, in the, in the, but, ah, part of what we'll go, we'll, we'll move on to that later on. Thank you. So, of course, contract law is one of the fundamental cornerstones of our legal system. Contracts facilitate trade, commerce, as well as other business and social transactions where they are a proof of a transaction having taken place for a promise to fulfil a certain obligation. A contract is, is important as it protects both, the party, both parties from any surprises and any changes to the contract. And this helps party to avoid uh, any type of misunderstanding that may arise and sometimes provides mechanism for settling disputes that arise between parties. So a contract is an agreement having a lawful object entered voluntarily by two or more parties. Typically, uh, each of these parties intends to create legal relations between them. And the elements of the contract are the offer, and acceptance, normally by competent persons having legal capacity, who exchange consideration, which generally is in the form of money, where the terms of contract must be certain. And, and of course, contracts. So this is the, at the very heart of the market system which uh, underpins the uh, uh, prosperity to which we all enjoy and is the foundation, indeed, of this nation and our economy. And now contracts, of course, may be formed orally. They may be formed uh, by based on paper, or through conduct, or, or through conduct, or through electronic means. Now, as has been explained in the explanatory note to this piece of legislation, the general rule, the pe to this bill anyway, that the general rule is that the contract is formed at the time of acceptance of the offer is communicated to the offerer. But uh, an exception. To that was created by a famous legal case called Adams v Linsell, uh, which uh, I must um, impose a little bit on the House uh, some history and go back to 1818, uh, when two parties were involved in the sale of some wool. And on the 2nd of Des September 1818, the defendants, of, uh, the defendants wrote to the plaintiffs, offering to sell them fleeces. Uh, and required an answer in the course of the post. Now, the, the, the defendants in this circumstance misdirected the letter so that the plaintiffs did not receive it until the 5th of September, Mr Speaker. The plaintiffs posted their acceptance on the same day, but it was not received until the 9th of September. Meanwhile, on the 8th of September, the descendants, defendants, not having received an answer by the 7th of September, as they expected, sold the wool to somebody else, and therein was the nub of the problem. Uh, the, the defendants argued that there could not be a binding contract until the answer was actually received, uh, and that until then they were free to sell the wool to somebody else. Uh, the judge said if that was true, it would be impossible to complete any contracts through the post, because if the defendants were not bound by their offer until the answer was received, then the plaintiffs would not be bound until they had received word, and it would go on and on indefinitely. So it was decided that when the offeree places acceptance in the post, there was a fictional meeting of minds, Mr Speaker, that concluded that the offer was done and gave effect to the acceptance. The idea was tidied further into what is now referred to as the postal acceptance rule. In the 1892 case, Henthorne versus Fraser, with Henthorne versus Fraser, where the court determined the precise timing of the acceptance, that is, the moment when the letter is acceptance was posted. So the long-standing rule as to postal acceptances in Adams v Linson 
is not appropriate for electron transactions. And so therein lies, there, therein lies the background to this member's bill. Now, uh, but, now uh, look, 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 please. If, if, look, I, I, I know it. I, I know it's difficult. It's, it's difficult sometimes to, 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 for these complex things to sink in on the other side of the house. And so I want to take my time. But however, be that as it may, uh, the, it w the, the will of this house was uh, sufficiently favourable uh, to pass this at the first reading. Uh, 83 votes to 37, I think it was. So it was quite a resounding victory. Uh, and it was sent off to the Commerce Committee, uh, where they considered this uh, draft uh, this bill uh, in quite some detail and heard submissions. And I was grateful to the work. I was what's that? Uh, well, I was grateful for the forbearance of the uh, committee and the hard work that they did in listening to the submissions and wrestling with some of the issues. Because it's not as simple as it seems. Because when indeed is an electronic uh, thing uh, accept, you know, is it when it arrives in the inbox, or is it or when it arrives in the server? And sometimes there's a gap between when the server and the uh, and when it arrives in the server and when it arrives in the inbox. And sometimes, of course, there is a gap. It is, it's not always as straightforward as it seems. Uh, and so the committee reported that the bill. Uh, the, the committee made a couple of uh, des uh, suggested changes, which I, I'm I, I'm grateful I'm grateful for them. So clause f clause five of the bill relates to contract formation as introduced proposes inserted. We, we were going to introduce, oh, my uh, initial bill introduced a new section 32A to explicitly state that an offer submitted electronically would be deemed to be accepted at the time of the receipt of the acceptance by the offerer. Now, this would create a misapprehension of a hard-wired rule applying that the offer can be deemed to be accepted electronically only at the time of the receipt. And uh, the committee proposed uh, the committee proposed amending clause five to insert a new section 13a into the act instead of the new section 32a to make it clear that this is a default rule instead of a rigid a form uh, a rigid approach from which the parties would be able to contract out uh, new section 13a1 would ensure the bill achieves its intended effect section 11 uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, there is a, a lot of disruption. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it hard to follow my train of thought uh, on this, uh, and I, I f I'm finding myself getting muddled. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, Mr. S I'm, I'm, won I'm wondering, Mr. Speaker, whether I shouldn't start again uh, and, 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 and uh, go back to the start because I, re I really have lost my train of thought. But uh, I, I just want to look. I just want to touch. If, if, if you don't mind, on the committee proposed amending Clause 5 order, to insert order, that's enough. Section 13A into the Act instead of Section 32A to make it clear that this was a default rule instead of a rigid approach form, which the parties were able or unable to contract out of. So the new 13A would ensure that the bill achieves its intended effect. Section 11 of the Act establishes the time an electronic communication is taken to be received. The amendment will make it clear that the time of the receipt referred to in section 11 of the Act also applies to acceptances of contract, offices, uh, uh, contract offers which are communicated electronically. So, and the new section 13.2 specifies that the acceptance rule would not apply if the contracting parties agreed otherwise, and I think that's absolutely appropriate because uh, if uh, uh, the parties negotiated sp specifically their own mutually agreed conditions in relation to the time and place of receipt, well, then good luck to them. And, and we live in a free society and they should be able to uh, do that, and I absolutely agree. In fact, that indeed is the principle that uh, uh, underlines my next member's bill, which I hope to have drawn in the next ballot, which is about contract formation uh, uh, in terms of uh, fitting in um, elements of uh, industrial relations. Uh, the, the committee's amendment would maintain the freedom of contracting parties to decide the time a contract is formed. Now, I, I just also want to uh, uh, just mention this, this question of uh, time of receipt and designation information system. So the committee considered whether the terms time of receipt and designated information system used in sections 10 and 11 of the Principal Act lacked, lacked clarity. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased to see that the committee was not persuaded that they lacked clarity and considered that the terms were in need of no further definition. So, 
Uh, on that score, I, I was very pleased uh, that the committee reported back, uh, and, and I, I do want to thank the, the honourable member Clayton Cosgrove for her, all his work on the committee and the fact that he was uh, part of, of the overall group who uh, reported back unanimously that this uh, bill be uh, continued on in this way. And so I'm looking forward to the support of the Labour Party this time round. Uh, if, if, if I did have a little bit more time, I could have... No, you have no more time, else. unfortunately. Right. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Mr Speaker.